Your goals should pull you through the process rather mm. than push you through the process. You're listening to the Dare to Be Different podcast, a podcast for people who want to live an extraordinary life. On this week's episode, Joe and Ed talk about the importance of having goals. Enjoy. So welcome to the Dare to Be Different podcast. My name's Joe. I am here with the healthy Ed Newell. How are you today? I, lo- I always look forward to my adjective. I, I, I love the fact that I have to think of it like <laughs> on the spot, on the spot. Like, am I, what am I going to say today? <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm doing really well. So you've been, you, uh, and I say healthy because you actually have been exercising pretty heavy, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So for me, I guess my general physical fitness, um, track record probably mirrors the majority of the world. Uh, obviously you have people that are always in fit into fitness and right. health and whatever. You have people that never do it. I'm in the middle where, you know, I have the ebbs and flows of life, right? Sure. Some seasons I feel like I'm very healthy. Some seasons I feel like I'm not, uh, some seasons I feel like I'm eating really well. Some seasons I feel like I don't, um, I'm in a good, I'm in a good season right now. Good. Yeah. And we're going to talk about that today, but yeah. I want to talk about a catastrophe that happened oh. the last couple of days at the Altieri household. Wow. Yes. Our dishwasher broke. <gasps> Yes, I know. Oh, no. <laughs> Crazy, right? Wow. Yeah, so I got like an emergency phone call from my wife. Like the dishwasher is, like I'm at work and this is like, man, I don't know, like Wednesday or Thursday of last week. Yeah. She's like, the dishwasher isn't working. I'm like, I don't, I have no way of helping you right now. <laughs> I'm not a handyman type person. Right. You know, I'm, I'm a good helper. Right. But I'm not like the guy that yeah. can fix the dishwasher. Yeah. At that moment, you're texting me like, is it on? Like, yeah, exactly. I'm like, like literally, I have two things. It. I, I'm like, go check the fuse box and yeah. make sure all the GFI things in the, in the yeah. kitchen are, you know, yeah. that they're all on good. the right spot. Yeah. Other than that, I'm yeah. out. Like, right. is something clogging it? Like, right. you know, not working means so many different things. Yeah. You know, yeah. Has it dumped all the water out into the <laughs> right? So, so I'm like, just call the repairman because it's just yeah. not. I I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. But this means for the past several days. We have had to do dishes. Hand washing. Hand washing, Ooh. hand drying, the whole, yeah. Wow. Like old school. This is total first world problems it, we got going it on is. here. This, you describe this as a catastrophe. This, well, we have a pretty blessed life. So, so this is this is a bit this is big news for the Altieris. It sounds like you need two dishwashers. Yeah, you need just to a do backup. a backup. <laughs> yeah, that's always installed, ready to go. <laughs> go pull it out. <laughs> <laughs> or like not even have to pull it out. Just we'll just alternate. Yeah. That, that, that way They'll they don't right get used as much. You'll be giving a tour. What's that? That's that's dishwasher one. <laughs> that's, that's the backup dishwasher. Dishwasher two. <laughs> I'm, I actually enjoy hand washing things. Do you really? Yeah. I mean, we if I can put it in the dish, doing the dishes is like my thing. Um, Interesting. My wife does all of our laundry, mm-hmm. and so I rarely will do anything related to laundry. I'll help fold or whatever, but. She just like takes care of that. I'm the dishes. And so no matter who cooks, no matter what the meal is, she just leaves stuff out and she knows like I'm taking you're, that's just that's just you're my on job. It. Okay. And we never like decided this, but I just did it. And our first one place time. Over, yeah. You did it one time when you were dating and that, that was yours forever now. <laughs> our first apartment didn't have a dishwasher, so that was all hand washing. And then so when we got our first house and had a dishwasher, I was like, This is amazing, you know. Uh and then uh, that dishwasher broke and so we bought like a really great dishwasher right and this thing is just like a beast like you can put anything in it it it's just gonna like wipe it clean and so i do love having that like there's a half a steak still stuck to it it grinds it up afterward (laughs) i got you but we just redid our kitchen yep uh, this past year and there's something about uh, after redoing the kitchen i'll spend as much time as i can in the (laughs) kitchen if it means i have to wash some dishes it's like great i get to stand in this beautiful kitchen and my big old sink that we put just put in and I'll wash some dishes. So I like it. So one of the things, so <clears throat> last night we had family dinner yep. and my daughters had their um, boyfriends, okay. whatever, whatever's yeah. happening right now, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. what, what right. the, the flavor of the week sort of thing. Right. <laughs> so they were, they're over. They're not listening. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, they're not. <laughs> but so they're, they're over and they're doing dishes because like, so it's, yeah. it's my two daughters and their two boys that they invited over. So they're doing dishes and it just reminded me of this, um, this lean manufacturing. So I, I'm, you know, I'm a manufacturing guy. Sure. We, we make 
stuff. We make sure. screens. And there's the there's this type of manufacturing that's Wait, that's, you make screens? We do. We we make screens, believe it or not. Oh. I know. I know it's surprising. Like a rigid frame? <laughs> not a rigid flat frame. <laughs> These are flexible. <laughs> It, oh my gosh. Yes. Believe that it or not. amazing. I was recently featured on an episode of Shark Tank, season 11, episode 10, if anybody would like to look it up. <laughs> I, I there may be a little bit, of, there may be a little sarcasm a here. There. All right, <laughs> but, keep going. So there's this method of manufacturing called lean manufacturing. Okay. And essentially what it says is that you should be pulling product through the manufacturing process, not pushing it through. Okay. So the difference is, uh, and they use this as an example when they're training for lean manufacturing. So if you, as a parent, are washing dishes with your child and you're trying to get them to go faster, right? So you can wash and, and you have washing and drying. And then in between you have like the little rack that, that they go on. Okay? Sure. So you wash the dishes, you put them into the rack, and your child takes the dishes um, and then dries them and puts them away, right? right? So if you're doing that, what, it, what eventually happens is you're, you go faster and faster, and then that rack simply, it, your child won't work faster than, you know, than they do normally, okay? Because okay? the rack will just, it'll just kind of stack up, yep. right? And they just kind of keep their, their whole thing. Right. That's pushing through the, the process, right? So you create whip. It's called whip. It's called work in process. So it's okay. you know a, a holding place for product that's half done. Okay. Okay. Then there's lean manufacturing says what you should be doing is pulling through that that process. So if you switch places, now the child is washing dishes and you get rid of that rack and you are actually drying dishes and putting them away faster than they can wash them, and your hand is always out, right, waiting for that next dish they will actually work faster and faster and faster to try to keep up with you. So you're pulling through the process rather than pushing through the process. Interesting. Yeah. So it was just, a, as I was watching them do dishes, because yeah, it, first of all, it was hilarious watching yeah. two teenage boys yeah. and two teenage girls do right. dishes. Yeah. You know? and, um, and it's a bit of a lost art because I'm looking at them like, yeah, we're going to have to redo all yeah. these dishes. You know, <laughs> like I'm not eating off of that, no. but whatever, yeah. let them do their thing. Yeah. But so it just kind of reminded me that, and what's interesting, um, and this is, you have to follow my train of thought I'm, here. I'm tracking. You're, you're I'm tracking, tracking so far. Yes. Okay. So broken dishwasher, teenagers doing yep. dishes, right? Lean manufacturing. Lean manufacturing. Whip. Right. Yes. Now we're going to talk about goals. Okay. okay. And there's this, there's this philosophy out there that your goals should pull you through the process rather mm. than push you through the process. Right. Okay. So a goal to, um, a goal about your health, right? A push would be. I want to lose weight. Right. Okay. So you're trying to push through. I want to lose weight. The, the pull through would be, I want to, uh, I want to look good and have pride in myself when I go to the beach. Sure. Or I want to, um, you know, I want to be able to play with my children or my grandchildren and not be out of breath. So mm. that's a pull through type of thing. So you, you look at the end goal of what you actually want to accomplish rather than, the the thing the actual that you, thing you have to do the actual thing that you have to mm, do interesting yeah so it would it would um so in this current season i'm training for a half marathon i've never ran anything longer than a 5k yep um well i have in my training but not in a regular race so i'm training for the half marathon that that is a goal that i would i want to accomplish and that has pulled me through and, and maybe I'm not describing this right, but no. tell me if I am. No, you're right. You're I, you're you, you, you're nailing it. Go okay, ahead. so I set this long term goal of running the half marathon. So now every meal that I eat, every time I go out and, and run some practice race, it's all varying distances. But in my mind, it's like okay, this the other day I ran five and a half miles, and that was the longest I've ever ran. I've never ran anything longer than five k. At that point, I go out for five and a half. And to me, I'm like, okay, I'm running five and a half. And that was in itself a really challenging, rewarding effort that I did. But it was still in in view of this long-term goal that yes, I'm going for. Exactly. Because, you know, we, uh, when you're pushing through, like I want to get, uh, you know, I, I want to get healthy. I want to lose weight. I want to run more, right? Yep. Whatever. That, that requires willpower, power, hmm. right? So you actually have to, Talk yourself into almost every time you do it, you have to talk yourself into, I have to go do this thing, right? right? And, and you're, you're trying to create habits. You're trying to go through all of those things. I am right. trying to eat better and stuff like that. Um, and they're, they're individually like these little individual things that, that you 
have to go down. I want to eat better so that I, you know, lose a little bit of weight so that I make running easier. I need to go out so many times. <clears throat> the way that you're describing, you're like, I want to finish the marathon mm -hmm. because, and then you have, I assume you have some emotions in your head of what that is like, you sure. know, like, man, this is going to be amazing getting across yeah. that finish line. My yeah. wife will be there, right? you know, um, cheering me on, mm -hmm. ringing the cowbell, all mm -hmm. of those types of things. Yep. And that actually, that actually pulls that goal or pulls those actions out of you to help achieve that goal. Interesting. Yeah. And I, I thought so too, because, you know, we as humans, we do, we do things for two reasons. When you really, really boil it down, we do things for two reasons. Money and sex. <laughs> and now we're back to PG-13. Now we have to change our, we have to change our. But there, there's some, there's actually some truth to that. It's to get pleasure, right? Or to eliminate pain. Got it. Like break down absolutely sure. everything that you do is, is to, can, you can put it into one of those categories. Yeah. Right. So if you had your honest truth about, about life, you would probably sit around and lay in bed all day. Like it's right. the easiest, easiest right. thing. Like if somebody was just bringing you food and yeah. whatever, right. But that gives you very little pleasure and it, and it, you know, mm -hmm. definitely would create pain in your life, mm -hmm. it, you know? Yeah. So, you, you know, we as humans, you know, everything that we do falls into one of those categories. Right. So the secret is to make the, either the, um, it's kind of the carrot and the stick, right? Mm -hmm. the, the stick either has to be strong enough to, to make you do something or the carrot has to be delicious enough to make you to do, do something. Right. Right. So when, when we're looking at, again, we'll just use the weight thing as yeah. like, I don't, I don't want to lose anything. Like I, I don't want to lose weight to, to lose weight. I mean, right. it's, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. I really like chocolate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I right. really, really like chocolate. Yeah. So I have to have something that, that um, either uh, a doctor that says, you know, if you continue eating chocolate, you're, you know, you have diabetes or something like that, where your feet will f fall off, mm -hmm. you, you know, whatever, you know, what happens with diabetes. Or there has to be something that is so pleasurable out there that it trumps the, the chocolate. The chocolate. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, that all makes sense. I feel like I, I've never learned about this or, or read about that, but I feel like when I think back about the, the various goals I've had in my life over different seasons, I can look back to the ones that I've been more successful or the seasons I've been more successful, and they have always been related to uh, having something that is pulling me through versus something that is pushing me through. Right. Um, when I start with this mentality that's like, man, I just got to go to the gym because I got to lose weight that is a really difficult place for me to be. And when I fall into that way of thinking, I know it's not too far off when I'm just going to stop because I'm not going to be able to maintain the willpower to just do that. Uh, but, and, and this is the reason I'm training for the half marathon. And uh, in the past season, when I, when I first was starting to run and I wanted to do a 5K, to me, that was like the ultimate goal for me. And mm -hmm. that really pulled me through. Uh, and now I'm father of two. Um, my, I have a history of diabetes in my family. So to me, main, making sure I never end up in a place that some of my other male relatives in my family have ended up in, that is a pull through goal that I have for myself to watch what, uh, n not only watch what I'm eating, but actually change my eating habits and in, right. in the way I think about food in order to make sure I'm going to end up in a place I want to be. So yeah, I mean, it certainly proves true for me. And I, I'm even thinking to some conversations I've had with friends recently where uh, I've maybe been trying to explain this very thought process but haven't been able to put the language to it. Uh, but yeah, establishing a, establishing a mentality that pulls you through versus pushes you through, yeah, I think it's brilliant. Yeah, and, you know, and as, as I was thinking about this, you know, the Dare to Be Different podcast is all about living an exceptional life. And we talk about these five words that my family, instead of having these – you know, um, new year's resolutions, which a lot of people call goals, right? You, you know, we had these words, the adventurous, honest, passionate, healthy, and grateful, but goals are actually really important. So it's not, it's not that these words, uh, somehow negate the need for goals, right? They're just uh, those, those words kind of put into categories where our goals would be, right. you know, less than 10% of Americans have any sort of goals in their life, less than 10%. Wow. Like real, real goals. And, and the, I, I think there's such a current social dynamic, though, around goal setting 
especially New Year's resolutions, because the statistics of failure are so high. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I assume that's not only for New Year's. I think it's probably for most goals. Yep. And so then, yeah, you end up in a society where, what was it, less than 10% less of people than 10% have goals. Yeah. Have, have any sort of goals. Yeah, so I think that that's a common place to get when people have constantly set goals and failed. Yeah, you're going to end up in, in that place. And so for me, I believe... And and I'm I'm kind of like you. I've I um uh, you know I have and I'm using the health as as an example. I have uh, heart disease in my family. Right. Right. So the the problem with um, goals of like I don't want to you know I, I want to exercise more. I, I don't want to die. Right. right. Um, is you know I I go to the doctor and they're like oh yeah your blood pressure is good. I don't smoke. I eat very little red meat. And you're like oh yeah you know you're it, you're actually pretty low risk for, for hearts other than your family history. You're sure. actually, you know, so I'm like, Great. cool, done. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, uh, like I'm not going to die tomorrow. Yeah. That's That's fantastic. Yeah. And so, you, you know, the, the, I don't want type of goals or I want to lose, or I don't want to do this type of goals are, are actually, they're like non goals mm. and, and they're not, they're not, uh, easy to, get uh, passion behind. They're not easy to get emotion behind. They're not easy to, um, you know, uh, have pleasure or pain associated with them. So, you know, but let's, let's just talk about what uh, the way to really set a goal. Sure. Right? Yeah. Well, and I think, I think this is a, a really good conversation because you, we live in this society, less than 10% of people have goals. Uh, there are people that we know, even yourself, you have this regular habit of setting a goal and failing at it. I think it's a really good conversation to, to have to say, okay, well, what is the proper way to set a goal? What, how can I make sure that this next time that I set a goal will be different than the previous goals that I've set where I just fall into the same way of thinking exactly, uh, and the same habit? So um, my first answer, I guess, to your question in light of kind of your introduction there uh, would be to ask that question, why? What, what, well, it, what is the thing I actually want to accomplish? What is the deeper thing that I actually want to see happen? Exactly. So, yeah, what do you really want? Yeah. And, and not the what don't you want? Because yeah. if, cause there's, there's, inner, there's inner dialogue happening in our brains all the time. As humans, we're, we're the, the only creature that can actually step out of our thoughts and actually look at them from the outside looking in. Uh, which is kind of cool if you th- yeah. if you think about it. like I know my brain is doing this as you're mm-hmm. as standing outside. It's you know it's a weird thing if you really think about it. Yeah. But when we tell ourselves that we don't want to do something or, or I want to lose weight or all of these negative things, you know that inner dialogue um, becomes part of what we uh, part of what we hate about the goal, Mm -hmm. you know, and then you're always thinking about like, if you say, I don't want to, you know, I want to lose weight. Uh, You're always thinking, you know, I'm fat. I don't want to do, you know what Mm -hmm. I mean? And and you, you think about that thing over and over again, you start telling yourself those things and it makes the goal harder. Yeah. Um, I I would even say it, it almost just reverses my entire thought process about what I want to accomplish in the first place. When I said, I do not want goal. Cause if I say, I don't want to weigh more than 230 pounds, I, it just innately within me, I'll push the line and I'll let myself exist at 228, 229. Right. And I'm saying, well, I'm not hitting my I do not want goal. And, and But really, that's not the right direction that I want to be going. I want a I want goal. I want to understand what I actually do need. And that's going to drive me to exist in a better place. And 228, 229 might actually be a healthy place. But my mindset, my mindset isn't going to be in the right place. And right. ultimately what's going to happen is I will find myself <laughs> letting myself fall into old way of habits or falling into old ways of eating or whatever that ultimately is just going to let me pass the I do not goal or, you know, go yeah. in the opposite direction of the I do not want goal. Yeah, because then then all of a sudden you're like, uh, 228, what's the difference between 229 and 231? Exactly. Is it that much of a difference? Right. So... But yeah, so we need to identify within our goal, you know, what is it that we want and then associate, um, again, this is a lot of inner self-talk and and inner dialogue and things like that, associate a lot of pleasure with that goal. Yeah. So for for instance, I'm going to jump away from the health. Um, You know, I have a goal with FlexScreen of, you know, being on, like I want our product to be every single screen on every single window. Yeah. When... I have to board a flight at six o'clock in the morning. 
there's a lot of pain associated with, you know, if you're if you're boarding a flight at 6 a.m., more than likely you got up at 3 to, you know, get dr- get ready, drive out Leave to the, the airport, all time. that all that yep. stuff, right? There's a I, nobody wants to do that. If you right. do want to do that, you're you're nuts. Either that or you're going on vacation where there's a lot of pleasure associated with it. Right. right? But you know, I have to associate the pleasure of uh, achieving that goal um, and the pride that I get and all of those, there's so much wrapped up in that goal yeah. that it makes all of it worth it. Yeah. And so we have to do that with, and, and truthfully, if you want to, if you want to have a goal that you're going to accomplish, you have to do that. Um, you have to wrap that up all together so that you're, uh, you in know, your thinking. Yeah. In your thinking. Yeah. I, I, I agree. My, so in, in my current season, all my goals predominantly tend to be health related. So even like when I'm running, running was never something I used to like. Uh, and then I did lose some weight and it became an easier thing to do. And I found out, Oh, I actually enjoy this. There's some runs that are tough. Mm -hmm. And even in that mindset, I will tell myself during that run, like I will literally say this out loud or at least think it to myself. But most of the time I'll, I'll say it out loud, even though I can't hear it, I'm listening to music or whatever. Um, I like this. I would literally say that out loud to myself to repeat these positive thoughts about what I'm doing because my goal when I'm running is to always just enjoy that one run Mm -hmm. because I know if I like that run, I'll be more likely to go out and run again the next day. And I do have this fear that I'm going to um, not not reach this goal of running the half marathon. And for me, I just, I want to make sure I'm hitting these landmarks along the way of just enjoying the run today. Mm -hmm. That means I'm going to do it again tomorrow. Uh, same thing with so my like, eating. Yeah, they're like mini goals. Mini goals, but, but they're still associated with the big goal. The big goal. Yeah, I, I've, I've said I've said this to myself. I want to win the day, and it, that's I, that kind of breaks down everything I'm doing into okay. I just got to win today, and if I win today, then I'm gonna. I want to try and win tomorrow, and ultimately, right. I'll, I'll get to my goal. So, uh, you know, we've. Um, uh, do you have? I, I assume you have some goals outside of. Um, health it's just an easy one for us to point it to. is I, I mean i got family goals mm-hmm. yeah and just related to um my wife and i uh in this season both busy both full-time jobs two young kids school i mean not uncommon for any you know parents with kids and it's so easy for us not to prioritize our own relationships not with each other but also with our kids so um yeah we have the, we have little goals for us where we want to put things in place so that we are prioritizing our relationship because we know the type of relationship we ultimately want. Uh, one that lasts a distance, one that's healthy, everything else. Uh, and so for us, that this picture of who we want to be as a family unit or as a marriage does prompt us to make certain decisions during the day that, yeah, so th- those aren't like more structured formal goals like my health goals, but I know the marriage I want. And so that does prompt us at certain times, we're going to put our phones down and make sure we get a, like a mini date in every day. Right. But, but it's still, it has the same, it has the same aspects where you go, this is the type of marriage. And you can probably even point to some people. You're like, man, there's aspects of their marriage that I like. And there's, yeah. you know, um, whether it's like, I, I know your, your parents have a fantastic yeah. relationship, yeah. Uh, you know, where you can point to them and go, you know what? Their children have moved out. They still have a lot in common. Mm -hmm. They still love each other. They Mm -hmm. still like being together. They travel a lot together. Right. Um, And that's, that's what we want to gear. And then what happens is when that becomes your relationship goal, all of the things that with your, within your relationship should have be pointing to that. So, okay. So yes, we have a disagreement, but we have this end goal of, you know, getting along and, and having, you know, a amazing relationship when we're. 40 years into marriage, 50 years into marriage. Mm-hmm. And if I, if I'm going to be a jerk about doing the dishes that day, <laughs> it's going to get in the way of that long-term, that long-term goal. Right. Uh, or, yeah. or, or, or whatever, you know, there's, yeah. there's all, all those things. Yeah. And so that's my point is, is um, through this, and we, we only have another minute or two here before we have to wrap up. But, yeah. you know, if we have these long-term goals and they, they can be long-term could be a week out. Yeah, you know, it, but but it's not a it's not a today. Like your your goal shouldn't be today. I want to lose weight. Yeah, it's you know here's here's the body that I want. Here's how I want to feel, mm-hmm. and then we visualize them. One of the things that athletes are so good at, and I've heard this over and over and over again, is visualizing the game or whatever they're doing ahead of time. They see mm-hmm. themselves crossing the the um 
the end zone, or, you mm-hmm. know, the goal line. Mm-hmm. You know, the race car drivers, they, you know, they envision the entire race mm-hmm. um, and they see themselves winning and all, all that stuff. Right. They, they have so much positive internal self-talk mm-hmm. that helps to drive them towards their, towards their goal. Yeah. We should be doing the same thing with, yeah. with our relationship goals, with our yeah. health goals, whatever the case may be. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think if you can identify the, the actual why, what do you really want, really understand what matters, if you can um, understand that every single thing you do ultimately will tie back to that. And mm-hmm. if you have this goal that's pulling you through, that's going to make the getting up early you know, for a flight, that's going to make doing the dishes, that's going to make uh, going for a run today, whatever your goal is and you know, the associated actions, it's going to make those things not even more tolerable or palatable, but in some essence, it makes it, it makes it feel worth it and enjoyable yes. because I know where I'm going, and so it makes what I'm doing right now worth it. Yeah. So uh, my advice to to anyone that's listening: have a goal that is pulling you through. Have it, make sure it's compelling and focused. Yep. Know exactly what it is. Make it something that you really, really want. Yep. Talk to yourself. You know describe it to yourself over and over again. Like, this is what I want to do. This is why I want to do it. This is the feelings that I'm going to have when I get there. You know, all of those types of things. And then everything that that has to do with that goal, make sure that you keep reminding yourself of it. Yeah. Can I add a bonus tip? Bonus tip. Love it. Bring it on. Tell other people. Tell other people. Get other people involved in your goal. I think um, we've talked about this in a lot in various shows, but don't do life alone right. and have some people n- next to you. They're going to champion you, support you, uh, be with you. Um, make sure that you don't have people that are dragging you down and saying, Oh, you don't got to go do that run today. Or, right. uh, you can cheat at this meal or, uh, you don't got to go home to your spouse and just keep stay out for one more drink or something, you know? So yeah, make sure you got really people good. around you that are going to continue to support and push you into who you're trying to be. Not, not drag you back. That's fantastic. Yeah. Great bonus. That is the bonus. Bonus. That's Ed, for free. Ed Null bonus. <laughs> and so anyway, thanks again, Ed, for, for coming on, giving us some, some amazing wisdom. Uh, I do wish you the best on your half marathon. We will be keeping you accountable. Hey, thanks. We as listeners. I'll let you know. I can't wait to, yeah. uh, I can't wait to see some pictures. We'll put them on the, on the website. <laughs> It'd be great. You coming, to, you know, you coming through the finish line, yeah. all red faced. Yeah. And, It'll you know, be great. It, it'll be amazing. So yep. anyway, thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, I hope that you want to live an exceptional life. I hope that you can find some goals that you're passionate about and that you're going to, to drive towards and things that are going to make your life better. So until next week, have a great one. 